I'm Randy Stone, and you're listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. Welcome to the True North Country Comics Podcast, dedicated to promote Canadian comic book creators and supporters. It's January 26, 2021. I'm John Swinimer. If you want to drop me a line, you can contact me at john at truenorthcountrycomics.com. On this episode, I chat with Randy Stone about The Sensational Swan. The podcast is available on Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts, and it's also available on the True North Country Comics channel on YouTube. Randy has written, drawn, inked, or lettered various comics, including Eskimo Kisses with Scout Comics, Champion at Arcana, a story in Alterna's If Horror Anthology, and a self-published collection of shorts, Death, and Comics. Having success with his first Kickstarter, there are more projects in the works for Randy's self-publishing brand, Altruist Comics. With Crime Pays currently printing, Randy has a new project entitled The Sensational Swan. So, without further ado, here's my chat with Randy Stone about The Sensational Swan. Randy Stone, thank you very much for taking time to chat with me. Not a problem. Thanks for having me. No, I appreciate your time. What I normally do to start off the interview is ask a creator about their first comic book. So I'm wondering if you remember, what was the first comic book that you read? You know, the furthest thing back that I can remember was actually The Last Starfighter, number three, I believe. Um, totally random, just something that must have been picked up along the way. But I wasn't really into comics for those first few years. It wasn't until the Marvel Universe trading cards came out that oh, I really okay. actually got into comic books. So I'd say that was my entry into comics, and specifically sure. Marvel. Okay. So who or what influences your work today? Uh, you know, I was struggling to think of, like, exactly who. I mean, I probably take a little bit from everything that I enjoy reading. Um, growing up, I was big into Jim Lee art. Uh, mm -hmm. I originally tried to get in as an artist, um, went through a fine arts degree and all that. So Jim Lee was, like, the, the idol whole bunch of people in that uh, era of 90s superhero comics but yeah just little bits of everything i moved more towards like vertigo stuff as far as writing and stories um that's probably rubbed off on me and i can't really think of anybody in particular like i, I had phases where i was super into garth ennis or right. uh, like mm -hmm. bkv yep. comics yeah just odds and ends and i don't know if anything actually shows up in my work itself that's kind of a tough, tough question to answer. Let's let's uh, move on to talk a bit about your upcoming Kickstarter project called The Sensational Swan. I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about it and maybe the origins for the project. For sure. Um, so this project is a collection of uh, three short stories, and there'll be some pinups in there as well. It's a character that I came up with just over a decade ago, basically as an excuse to have this swan mask, which I thought was a brilliant design. Uh, the guy's face looks like a swan head. And I eventually made a comics short story uh, featuring him that was sort of an analog to Batman and Robin. He's, of course, a, a Batman-esque character, and there was a kid sidekick. So it was really just an excuse to use this costume design that I came up with. It kind of sat in the drawer for about 10 years and then showed up in a collection of short stories I did called Death in Comics a few years back. Uh, I really liked the idea and I wanted to push it further. I was chatting with a friend, John Ward. He's a, a local Vancouver writer. Um, I had him do up a short story and I worked with two other writers on two other stories to kind of flesh out the character and create sort of a world and a history. Um, each of them kind of take place in a different era, kind of different influences um, from different eras of Batman even, or, you know, just to give the sense that there was a long history of this character, even though it only is a handful of short stories that he exists in. Uh, but that'll be coming out at the end of this month. Uh, three stories are done. Uh, just kind of polishing up some of the lettering on one of them. And yeah, that's, that's what will come out at the end of this month. Sounds good. Now, it's not just you working on this. I, I guess you have some collaborators as well. Maybe you could talk about that. Yeah, exactly. So the one that I mentioned, that's written by John Ward. And I've got uh, Marco Perugini and Ariana Mayer, uh, who did the art and letters. Uh, one of the other stories is written by P.D. Lupe with me. Um, and then Luana Vecchio has done the art, full art, uh, line work and colors. And then the last story here I co-wrote with uh, Travis Rivas and is drawn by Robin Richardson. 
uh, colored by Gab Contreras and lettered by Greg Deng. That's a lot of people. How did you find all of them? I'd say probably most of them are Twitter, just scouring the internet for people that are interesting, their styles are neat and uh, look like somebody I'd like to work with. Uh, some of them are just a great fit. Uh, Robin came about, I, I did a call out for artists and I've actually been following them for a little while. Uh, but they contacted me as one of those call outs looking for an artist. And I thought, wow, that's perfect. And you know, it worked out wonderfully. I'm I'm glad it did because nine times out of 10, it doesn't. You exactly. sometimes have to do trial and error to find the right people, but I'm glad it worked out for you. Yeah. Those call outs can be interesting too, because you end up getting a lot of people who just are not worth the time, but then there's those few that are really standing out and outstanding work. And so it, was, it was, really worked out well. Great. Good, good. Now, with any Kickstarter, there's certainly incentives and rewards. And I'm wondering if you have anything lined up for this particular project. Yep. So the basic reward is this collected um, single issue of three short stories. There are some other ones. So my previous Death in Comics, which was the first appearance of uh, Swan, will be one of the reward tiers. I've got some 11 by 17 art prints, and I'm working on actually a set of five trading cards that I'm hoping to get done. So yeah, that'll be uh, one of the rewards there. I've got original art from the initial first series, as well as the cover art from the book that is coming out. Uh, that'll be probably the, the high-end reward there. Great, great. Now, what, what sort of tools do you use to create your art? Dip pens, brush, India ink, um, technical pens, a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. um, I, I originally was trying to break in as an inker several years back, so that was kind of the thing that I enjoyed doing most. But as time went on, it was just hard to really work that into my schedule. And I found writing stories was easier to do because you could just do it in your head and then you get home from work and kind of type it all up or, you know, those things that you think of in the shower or something like that. You can't really ink a page or draw anything in the shower. But uh, writing seemed to work out there. So I gravitated more towards that over the past several years. Now, it, it must have been because uh, you said this project has three stories in it. Was it difficult to juggle all the different collaborators to keep everything on track? They all actually kind of took turns. The first one I did actually was done maybe almost two years ago, or at least when we started, it's been a couple of years. Uh, and then I just wrapped up the last one a few months back. So they weren't all at the same time. So that was much easier. I bet. Yeah, because that, that could be a lot to take on. Um, I know with Kickstarters, it's pretty much you are the focal point. You're the chief cook and bottle washer. So what have you learned along the way working on Kickstarters that you might want to pass along some advice to others who might want to do this? Uh, definitely preparing ahead of time. So I've actually funded two projects through Kickstarter before this one. And I think the more work you do ahead of time, you'll reap the rewards during the campaign. It's high stress. Like you, you wouldn't imagine just how much uh, time and energy you put in, or even just thinking about it throughout the campaign. Should I be sending out updates or you know where you're posting and everything, trying to let everybody know. Uh, my reach is not that big, at this point so really trying to push that out and marketing is not something i've ever really dealt with before but having to wear that hat as a self-publisher is um, certainly new and challenging <laughs> and i guess with the lack of of conventions uh, that we've been going through it's a little tougher to get the word out i suppose exactly not having that one aspect has uh, definitely been difficult well it definitely makes it worthwhile once once you're able to get that out the door and get it going so uh, congrats on, on getting it to this phase, and, and I'm sure there'll be lots of success in the future. Thank you so much. So uh, you've got this uh, project just about done. I'm wondering what's next for you? What, what's coming down the pike that you can talk about? Uh, so the next thing that I would like to do is a print edition of a story called Bullet. That's something that is currently on Webtoons and Tapas. So it's, it's something I came up with again years ago, and I had it. Kind of a first draft that kind of sat there for a while. I found some collaborators, Jordan Alsaka and uh, Catherine Lobo. She did the art. Uh, Jordan co-wrote it with me and Kath on the art. Um, Lucas Gattoni, he is doing the lettering. So that's all online. Uh, it's free to read on Webtoons and Tapas. And we're actually almost done the whole first book. The work is complete, but we're on, I think, one more update on uh, webtoons and just two more on tapas and the whole thing is wrapped up so i'm hoping towards the end of spring or summertime i'll do another kickstarter launch for this collected edition 
Sounds good. Now, where can people find you online, uh, both through uh, uh, maybe a website or through social media, to find out what you're going to be up to? So I've got a Twitter. It's Randy Stone C O T W at Randy Stone C O T W. Uh, I'm also on Facebook uh, with the Altruist Comics group. So you can find that page as facebook.com slash Altruist Comics. And there's an Altruist Comics Twitter as well at Altruist Comics. Great. Well, Randy, those are all the questions I have for you, but I'm wondering if there's something I didn't ask that you like to get across as interview. Um, one other project that actually just wrapped on Kickstarter was Crime Pays. It's a collection of short crime stories. Um, so I'm actually just sending that to the printer right now. And um, I'm taking orders still. So depending on this actually goes gets out there, I will have extra copies while doing extra print run. Um, so yeah, that's a collection of 16 short stories. Uh, crime looks really sharp. A lot of great stories in there. Ton of creators. Um, so yeah, if anybody's interested in that, I've got information on the social media about that as well. So that'd be great. I'd love to share that with people too. Thanks to Randy for the chat. You can discover more about Randy on Twitter at Randy Stone, C-O-T-W, and at Altruist Comics, and online at altruistcomics.com. And thanks to you for listening to the True North Country Comics Podcast. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to and like this podcast on Apple Podcasts, and please leave a good rating. Also check out the truenorthcountrycomics.com website and follow along on Twitter at True North Comics. True North Country Comics is now on YouTube. Please like and subscribe to that video channel. And if you have any feedback at all, please send along to john at truenorthcountrycomics.com. Thanks again for listening, and come back soon for another episode. Bye for now. True North Country Comics podcast is copyright True North Country Comics, copyright 2021.